how do I edit the letters? Now, this question came in because it was in reference to letters inside of the software. So let me answer that for you. In the software, every time you print a letter or if you're in the view area of the letter or the letter editor section or the letter vault, all you have to do is hit the edit button. And when you hit the edit button, it will open up the letter, the letter ed editor. And at that point, you can edit the letter and do whatever you want, edit it, save it, that sort of thing. Should my client see my letters? And the question is no. Your client should never see your letters. Why would you want them to see your letters? The only way they would see your letters is if you are sending the letters to your client and having them mail them out. Then if you do that, why would they need your service? So the answer is no. Your clients should not see your letters. Your letters should be sent directly to the credit bureaus and not to your clients. If a client has 10 inquiries, 10 collections, and 10 charge-offs, am I supposed to make individual campaigns for each of these 10 items? Hey, that's a great question, and that, that th these are real questions. And this question is based off the software. This question is based off the software because the software is broken into campaigns, right? So when you look at this type of situation, no, you know, you don't, you know, use campaigns for each of these ten items. What you want to do is you want to bunch the items into groups, and then you use campaigns for the groups. So for example, 10 inquiries will be a group, 10 collection accounts will be a group, and 10 charge-offs will be a group. So then you would just use the campaigns that's associated with the group. So if you're going to go after the inquiries first, then you would use the inquiry campaign. If so, how many days apart can I mail these letters to the credit bureaus? Now this question is referencing to the previous question with the campaigns. So what they're trying to ask here is if is if you're using different campaigns, how long should you wait? Like if you if you're using the inquiry campaign and then you switch to the charge off campaign and then you switch to another campaign the question is how long should you wait before you send out the letters and the question is the answer is 30 to 35 days do I have to wait until I get a reply from each one now this is referencing back again to the prior slide where we talk about 10 inquiries 10 collection accounts and 10 charge-offs so the answer is yes, you want to wait until you get a reply from each one before you start sending out round two. Should my clients sign the letters? Now this is a very, very popular question. And the answer is no. The credit bureaus don't care if your client signs the letter or not. It doesn't make a difference on the outcome of your disputes. So the answer is no, your clients are not required to sign the letters and if they were required how would they sign them you're not sending the letters to them so how would they sign the letters are clients required to pay for privacy guard and set up their own account this is this is in reference to the software in the software we have privacy guard as our number one credit provider credit report provider which they which customers can import uh, their privacy guard right into the software, the owners of the credit repair company. So yes, clients are required to log into privacyguard.com, set up an account, a $1 free trial, and if they decide to stay with privacy guard beyond that, they will be charged, I think, $19.99 a month, every single month. So yes, clients are required to set this up. You're not required to set it up. You should not be setting it up. You should let your client do all the work. All right, so this is a pretty big one here, so bear with me here. Okay, I received a response from Experian 
regarding a client's file I'm currently working on and stating that they are not required to possess in their files verifiable, verifiable documents including the contracts, signature cards, etc., 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 concerning the substantiation of furniture information in regards to their reporting. Is this true? And this is kind of lengthy, but I think I know what he's asking. Are the credit bureaus required to provide or currently keep documentations that's that's supporting your your client's dispute or claim and the answer is no the credit bureaus are not the furnishers the furnishers which is the creditor or the collector are required to have documentation to support their claim that they're reporting on your your on your client's credit report not the credit bureaus the credit bureaus are not there for that they don't have to provide any type of documents to justify your dispute if you want to verify something, if you want to request for documentation to verify something that's been reported on your client's credit report, then you would go directly to the creditor and the collection agency. So this is the second part of that first question. Same gentleman. They, meaning the credit bureaus, that they also have the audacity to state that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau who is charged with enforcement of the Fair Credit Reporting Act does not require them to maintain verif 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 verifiable original documents with clients' signatures from the time the account was opened, even though this is obviously the law. This can't be true. Well, it's not the law. The credit bureaus, again, are not required to maintain client signatures of contracts. Okay? So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is correct. The creditors, the people who put the negative information on your client's credit report, are required to maintain documents with client signatures, along with collection agencies who bought bad debt from the creditor. Okay? Can I mail out the campaign letters myself without without my client's signature with a copy of the license and the social security card plus a bill statement or do I have to send the letters to the client for their signatures no you don't send the letters to your client for signature you mail out the letters you don't sign the letters now you have a power of attorney contract in the software you can use that you give it to the client to sign okay and you're working on behalf of the client yes every letter that you send out you send a copy of the license social security card and the current bill the reason why you do this is you want to prove to the credit bureau that the client is the person that is sending out these letters all right the credit bureaus tend to put up stall letters they send stall letters because they are trying to stall and slow down the process so make sure every letter you send out that you have a copy of the license the social security card and the bill statement if your clients license address is different if your clients license address is different from the utility bill make a small little note explaining why why the address is different okay if I have a former client of Lex law we all know what they're talking about Lexington law can he or she request letters to be sent to creditors or credit bureaus for my I don't know what really what this question is but I'm gonna try to figure it out um, if I have a former client of Lexington law can he or she request letters to be sent to creditors or credit bureaus I'm not sure what this person is asking okay so what I think they're asking is if if the client uh, let me see request letters to be sent to creditors or credit bureaus I think they're asking if you if you are with another credit repair company can your client request you 
to send letters to creditors and credit bureaus? And the answer is yes. I, I'm not sure of the question here, but I'm doing my best. I'm still having problems interpreting credit reports. Where should I and my clients solicit credit reports? Now, let's stop right there. I'm still having problems interpreting credit reports. So I fixed that because I've added two or three videos under the credit repair section in the software on how to read credit reports and how to read privacy guard reports. So you shouldn't have a problem there. It's also a downloadable audio of me doing a live interview with someone on how to read credit reports. Where should I and my clients solicit credit reports? Now, if you want to use a credit report importer in the software, you would have your client sign up for Privacy Guard. And you would have you would download the credit report and import Privacy Guard credit report. You could do that. If you don't want to use a credit report importer, you can have your client get credit reports from anywhere, anywhere on the internet. Annualcreditreport.com. Experian.com, TransUnion.com, Equifax.com, and then you can manually input the information. I have used Privacy Guard. I applaud that it's importable. Only in other than scoring, it's very hard to interpret the report and choose dispute campaigns. Again, I've added new videos on how to interpret the Privacy Guard credit report it's under the credit repair section training section in the software I've also added a new video under dispute campaigns on the dispute strategy that shows you how to determine which campaign you should use based on your evaluation of the credit report what happens after I use my one hour of coaching so what this person is referring to is that when you sign up for the standard or the platinum package of the startup credit repair business training software you get one hour free coaching if you want coaching beyond the one hour we do offer coaching sessions it is ninety nine dollars an hour beyond the one hour how do I edit the letters and upload them again I know that the letters have small errors so that it would seem as an average person wrote them but some of my clients read the letters and they and they look at me as if I can't write so let me answer this question for you guys and this has something to do with all dispute strategies and how a letter should appear so let's go back through this how do I edit the letters and upload them again so basically we talked about how to edit the letters every single time you dispute a letter um, you present it with the letter there's an edit button you can edit the letter from there you can also edit the letter in the letter editor you can also edit the letter in the letter vault okay some of the letters have errors by mistake okay these errors are put there in the letters by mistake you don't want a perfect letter why because consumers don't write like that all right only lawyers smart people people are good at grammar they write perfect but the average consumer they don't write like that they have errors in their letters okay remember you these letters have to appear like they're coming from a consumer and not from a credit bureau okay or a credit repair company so and then the other part of this question is that my clients read the letters and they look as me they look at me as if I can't write well your clients should not be reading the letters okay your clients should not be reading the letters the, the letters are for you it's your business okay typical scenario if a client has 10 arc inquiries 10 collections and 10 charge offs I suppose I then make individual campaigns for each of these 10 items if so how many days apart can I mail these letters to the credit bureaus do I have to wait until I get a reply for each well this is a duplicate question I answered this question earlier also none of the letters indicate that the client should sign the letters at the bottom I just want to confirm that the letters will not have the client's signature is that correct yes all right so this is a big one let me have some water first okay let's tackle this one is it better to do credit repair after filing bankruptcy 
or settling slash nego negotiating debts. I have a lot of debt and I'm not sure if it's better to try to settle them someday when I can afford to or just file bankruptcy and start over. Is it easier to repair credit with settlement after a long absence of payments or after bankruptcy? I had a 750 plus credit score and qualified all loans before losing my job and accumulating a ton of debt. I have been unable to even make payments on. Debts and credit cards are and medical. My goal is to either file bankruptcy or settle my debts in the future and get my credit score back up without waiting seven to ten years. Okay. That's a lot in this question, so we're gonna to try to tackle it. We're just gonna do an overview for training purposes. If your client's debts exceed their annual income, if your client's debts exceed their annual income, if they cannot make their payments, if they're getting sued, if they're getting judgments, if they're getting tax liens against them, if they haven't wage garnishments taken out of their account, then they need to see a bankruptcy attorney. Filing bankruptcy is not all that bad, actually. It depends on the situation. It depends on what you want and how important is credit to you. Some people file bankruptcy and they have a whole new life. And after a year or so, they can start rebuilding their credit. They can start rebuilding their credit right away, but they'll start getting credit again after a year or so. So it's not always a bad thing. Now, as far as debt settlement, that sort of thing, it really depends on a lot of things. If you have too much debt, bankruptcy is an option. If you have medium debt, then and if you have the money to settle your debts, I would always say go with the dispute process first for maybe three rounds. And if you're not getting anywhere there, then you can offer debt settlements. And then after you settle all, out all of the debts, then you go back to your disputes. It'll be a lot easier for you to get them deleted. I'm reviewing my own credit report. I ordered all three reports and and scores through Experian. However, I also ordered an individual report from TransUnion and noted that my score was considerably considerably higher than either of the other three scores on Experian report. How do I know which one is right? Well, to answer that question, if you're not pulling your credit scores from myfico.com, then every other place that you're pulling your credit scores from, including the major credit bureaus, are not the accurate credit scores. MyFICO.com has the true credit scores. Every other place that you pull your credit scores from have an estimated of what your credit scores are because they're not using the FICO score. Now, if you contact Experian, here's what I suggest you to do. Contact Experian, TransUnion, Tran and Equifax first before you pull your scores. Ask them, are your credit scores calculated based on my FICO? Are these the true credit scores? If they say yes, then get them. If they say no, then you know that they're consumer scores. I also have reviewed the information on how to dispute, and I'm very confused on what can be disputed. Or maybe I'm confused on why or why not something can be disputed. I have attached one of my accounts for understanding on what or if there is something I can do with this account. Well, first of all, if you not sure what needs to be disputed, you have to go back through the software and look at the dispute process page. You can't skip the dispute process page. If you've never done credit repair before, you have to follow the instructions in the software as far as how to dispute, what to dispute, and dispute strategies. If you don't follow those instructions, you won't know what to dispute. You won't know how to dispute. You won't know how to read a credit report. So it's very important that you take your time and understand this information first. Okay, guys? Because you're dealing with people's money. You're taking people's money. You have to know what you're doing. Okay? The software lays it out to you step by step what to dispute, how to dispute. Take your time and understand it. I noticed that the condition is paid. Now they're talking about a credit report. The condition is paid. I don't know what condition means. The statute, the status is collection charge off. This account was placed into collection. Exact date on recall. I paid the account off. 
exact date on rec unrecorded sorry I don't notice anywhere it reveals when I first became delinquent since the account has a zero balance I know there will be no lawsuit and thus the statute of limitation has no bearing here however is there anything that I can do to improve the way this reflects on my credit report well it's already negative okay collection status charge off status it's negative it's just showing a zero balance so the damage has already been done the notation on your credit report always already shows a negative notation so there's really nothing you can do about it you've already did everything you can do because it's at a zero balance all you need to do now is focus on removing the inaccurate account totally from the credit report I guess what I don't understand is what can be disputed to help the customer outside of the obvious forgive me for not knowing how to articulate what I'm trying to get across if a client pays off a debt what is the goal that needs to be met in order for that particular account to not negatively impact the customer's credit report once it's paid let's stop there so if a client pays off a debt they want to know what needs to be done to not affect the credit report well the client needs to negotiate a settlement for a complete deletion then it won't affect the credit report the credit report was affected when it became negative just because they paid it off it doesn't help it that much it really depends okay because when you pay off a debt it updates the, the last date of activity so that can further um, hurt the credit score so by it showing zero it's better because it, you now you can go after it to get it completely deleted using the dispute process but before a client pays off the debt they should always go for a complete deletion your training says that having a pay collection is no different than an unpaid collections once you have paid the collection it does not mean the collector is reporting it hundred percent correctly I don't understand what that means or if that applies here can you please elaborate once you have paid the collection it does not mean the collector is reporting I don't know what that means it doesn't matter whether you paid the collection or not if you paid the collection okay it's easier for it to come off because now the collector doesn't have any more interest in it but when the, when the collection is unpaid the collector have interest so they're gonna keep validating the account if you can pay it and you want to get it off your credit report and you're not trying to buy anything and you don't care about your credit score pay it or try to get a a pay for deletion if you can't get a pay for deletion pay it and then take it back through the dispute process all right what if anything should I do when there is such a difference in the credit scores do you recommend one source over another when obtaining credit scores as far as accuracy what score do potential creditors see when they run a credit report and the answer to that is myfico.com thank you in advance for your assistance hello I'm trying to remove some inquiries from my report and where you add the item section okay let me just repeat here hello I'm trying to remove some inquiries from a report and where you add the item section is asking for an account number but in the credit report I don't have an account number the only company name only the company name what should I do so what they're referencing to is in the software in the add item section where you add items right or where you import the credit report for inquiries in that inquiry section under account where you put the account number there's no account number for inquiries so if you adding it manually you want to put in a okay if you importing it NA is automatically there but if you put it in manually just put in a are you allowed to accept a consultation fee via PayPal but have the monthly payment charge to the merchant account and the answer is no you can't do that with PayPal all right your consultation fee should be done through your merchant provider that process credit cards for credit repair companies Mark mentioned in a previous answer that you don't need to send bureau disputes via certified mail. But how do we track the letters to make sure the bureaus are doing everything within a lot of time frame that the law provides? 
Furthermore, what if the client demands proof that we are indeed sending out the letters to the bureaus? Wouldn't the certified letters be the only thing to satisfy the man? Yes, the certified letter mail, certified letters uh, would be the only thing that will certify that you're sending them out. But since I've been in credit repair, as long as I've been in credit repair, no client has ever emailed me or called and said, hey, look, I need proof that you're sending out the letters. Okay, so let's 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 go back on that question. Is it possible that you can send out every single letter, certified mail? You're talking about three letters per client. Is that possible? Yes. Will it cost you a fortune? Absolutely. And will it cost your clients a fortune? Absolutely. Does it matter? Only when you're preparing for litigation. That's when it matters for the credit bureau. Only when you pay, preparing for litigation. Yes, if you send it out certified mail, yes, now the credit bureau knows that you're on a time clock and you can monitor them and you can hold them to the fire. But does it make sense to do it every single time? Maybe no, it doesn't. Can you do it every single time? Yes. How long would that last? Probably not long. Why? Because it's very expensive. What is the best strategy, Mark? What is the best strategy Mark knows from his own personal experience to remove charge-offs from a person's credit report? Are there any laws pertaining to a creditor writing off the debt, getting a tax credit, insurance, re-equipment, and still being a double jeopardy issue? So I, I you know, it's a little confusing this question, but I, I know what he's talking about. Charge-offs are used just, charge-off is a, is a negative trade line just like a collection. You would use the same strategies that I teach in the software to get inaccurate charge-offs removed. If it's not reported 100%, then it has to be deleted, period. You have to find problems with the charge-offs to get it removed. And there can be many, many charge-offs with issues, okay? So technically, if a charge-off is at a zero balance, it cannot carry a balance. So if you see a charge-off on a credit report, and it's reporting with a balance and it's actually been paid off, then it's reporting inaccurately. So you have to challenge that, okay? What do you do if you sent a validation letter to the creditor and they validated the old debt? What would be the next step in the process? So this is a very interesting question that was brought up by one of my owners of the credit repair company. I'm gonna try to answer this in a couple ways. So if you sent the validation debt to a creditor or a collector, most of the time they won't provide you with all the documentations that you need. If you don't, if they don't, well, first of all, let me back up. Um, if you send in a debt validation letter to a collection agency, according to the law, they have to provide you with certain documents, okay? And if they don't provide you with certain documents, then technically they haven't validated the debt. And if they haven't violated the debt, then they can't report it to the credit bureau. And if they're reporting it to the credit bureau, then they're in violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And you have to let the credit bureaus know that. Now, in the collection agency campaign in the software, the six letter campaign will take you through that. Use it. Use it. If you send the first letter out and they don't properly validate it according to the documents that you requested, Send out letter two. Letter two builds on letter one. All right. There's a lot of options you can do here. If they don't validate it, uh, and you can just send out letter two to the credit bureau stating that they didn't validate, it must be deleted. Okay. Uh, there, if they validate the debt, if they send you all the documents that you requested, every single thing on the list that you requested, which I know they won't, but if they do, then at that point, there's a couple of the options that your customer needs to take. If they validate it 100%, then that's telling you that your customer's debt is correct, okay? Then at that point, you can either continue with your dispute process, you can go back to the customer and say, hey, look, they validated the debt 100%. You can offer a settlement for 100% to for complete deletion. You can offer a settlement for 50, 20% on a dollar, and then go back after the dispute process. So there's multiple things you can do if a collector comes back and validate the debt a hundred percent which more than likely they they won't and if they don't validate it a hundred percent just follow the collection campaign strategy it'll take you through all of the the six letters okay 
What information is out there for child support on a credit report? I know all states have different set of laws. Child support notation on a credit report is the same like a collection. All right. If, if the child support is past due and you're caught up current and you're finished paying um, the child support, if you find some inaccuracies with that child support, you dispute it the same way like you dispute anything else. Okay. You can also dispute directly with the child support department also, but be careful because you want to dispute the correct way. Okay. Accurate or inaccurate. It seems that anything mortgage related is more difficult in deleting such as a foreclosure, such as foreclosures, short sales, and mortgage late payments, as it seems to creditors are going out of their way to verify data being reported. How can we have success deleting this data? Well, in the software, in the letter campaigns, there is a mortgage late payment campaign. There's also a foreclosure campaign slash short sale. So you want to use the letters in those campaigns to tackle foreclosure short sales and multiple lates on a mortgage okay it all goes back to finding information that's inaccurate that's not reporting a hundred percent accurate is there a dispute reason in the software that we can use to update and correct incorrect credit limits on credit reports for our clients no there's not a specific uh, dispute reason you would have to use a custom dispute reason to indicate what you want corrected in the letter for your client is there a dispute reason in the software that we can use to update or correct incorrect addresses or employment on the credit reports for our client again no you would have to use a custom dispute reason when you're addressing letters for your particular client any other new industry methods or resources you can share that would get a high percentage of deletions using the software you just have to try different strategies using different methods using the campaigns you can mix and match the campaigns to produce better results if you choose to or you can utilize the standard campaigns to try to get the results that you need it's totally up to you you guys have to understand what these letters say you have to review these letters in time. You have to become a master at the software in knowing which campaigns to send and knowing which letters to send and knowing when, when to use the respond letters. Okay. What letter or method of disputing do you recommend for a mortgage home equity line of credit that will settle and reports on, on credit such as settle for less than amount due but needs to be removed as the client needs to refinance but cannot because this specific narr narration reporting she still lives in the home what can be done what letters should be sent okay so this is a this is a, a, a line of credit uh, equity line of credit so more than likely this particular trade line has a lot of late pays on it okay and she settled for less than the amount due so in a situation like this you can use the hybrid campaign to attack this and the hybrid campaign is dealing directly with the credit bureau you can also mix and match the hybrid campaign or you can use the late payment campaign to tackle this particular section you can also look at the foreclosure campaign on this one also a client called and said that ADT pulled her credit and Equifax said that she was deceased what is the protocol for this or what should you do well this appears to be inaccurate reporting so in a situation like that, you you know, you want to uh, report to Equifax or use the hybrid campaign and indicate that the reporting is incorrect, your client's personal information is incorrect, and your client's not deceased. Send proof that your client is alive. Send a current utility bill along with the, um, ID and social security number, and ask the credit bureaus to delete the inaccurate personal information I have some judgments on my credit report that shows as eviction I was never evicted I was sent to court for payment and they were always paid before a writ was ever filed how do I dispute this information so it can stop affecting my ability to get an apartment so basically what you want to do is you want to gather all the evidence that you have 
and you want to dispute it that you know you want to dispute this with the original creditor who placed the judgment on your credit report you want to dispute this with the landlord you want to make them prove that in fact that you were late and you want them to show you all the documentations to prove that led up to the judgment why did they send this to court what led this to go to court you you need to have them approve or prove to you that you were in fact late okay and that you were never evicted you need proof once you get the proof in you can dispute the judgment don't send in your proof to the credit bureau but you can dispute the judgment based on the fact that you were never evicted and you have to uh, accumulate an argument you have to build an argument so you can prove yourself to the credit bureaus that you were never evicted you also want to prove it to the landlord and if in fact you truly have proof you may want to bring a lawyer on board to assist you with this charge-offs any chance of getting them off the credit report so we go back to this again charge-offs there's a charge-off campaign in the software that takes you step by step on how to remove charge-offs if the charge-offs are inaccurate then they're not allowed by law to report on the credit report